Ah, summer. Beaches, flawless tan, and cicadas buzzing so loudly that you can hardly hear yourself think. That's probably the only time we think of them, but things will be different in 2024. Millions, even billions of cicadas are just quietly waiting under our feet for the perfect day to emerge. A cicada apocalypse will happen soon, and the last time we faced such a terrifying situation was in 1803. Cicadas. They've existed for about 5 million years, and there are over 3,000 species in the world. No big deal. In the eastern U.S., you have basically two different types. First, annual cicadas. These are the ones you probably hear during the summer. Although they have this name, it doesn't mean they actually have an annual life cycle. The nymphs, which are what their babies are called, can spend up to five years underground until they emerge. The second type is periodical cicadas, which are a different species that emerge every 13 or 17 years. In fact, this is the longest life cycle out of any insect in the world. In 2024, there will be a synchronized event that people are calling the Cicada Apocalypse. This time, two different broods of periodical cicadas will sync their life cycles. So, brood 13, which arrives every 17 years, and brood 19, appearing every 13 years, will emerge at the same time. This situation is so rare that it won't happen again for another 221 years. We're talking about billions of these insects emerging across the Midwest and Southeast of the United States. It might all start in late April and last about six weeks. It's expected that one type of cicada will emerge mostly in Illinois, while the other type may cover a much larger area, including Missouri, Louisiana, North Carolina, and Illinois. Yep, it turns out that these two broods share some geographical areas. So if you live in Illinois, you'll be in for a double whammy. The same goes for Indiana. Now you might be asking yourself, what are these cicadas doing during those 17 years? Besides, I don't know, planning their apocalypse? Well, they're living underground without sunlight, but they're not sleeping. They're very much conscious and active in their nymph forms, excavating tunnels and feeding on sap from tree roots. When they reach the age of 17, they check if the temperature is suitable for them to emerge, and they are very picky about that. They only emerge when the soil about 8 inches underground reaches 64 degrees Fahrenheit. That's why cicadas in different parts of the United States appear at different times. The soil in Virginia might reach that ideal temperature before the soil in Illinois, for example. But one thing is for sure, once the correct temperature is set, all the cicadas in that specific area will feel it, and they will make their journey to the surface together. They'll start by digging their way out of the soil and trying to climb as quickly as they can to a nearby vertical structure, like a tree. Once there, they will shed their exoskeleton and reveal their wings as grown adults. This journey has one purpose and one purpose only, to reproduce. And for that, they will engage in a noisy search for a mate. Thank God humans don't do this. The cicada apocalypse will be pretty much it. I know, it is a bit of a buzzkill, isn't it? You don't have to fear it because cicadas are not dangerous at all. They don't bite or sting. Cicadas aren't even harmful to your garden plants. They're just noisy. So having billions of them emerging from underground means that their noise will make a lot of people go crazy as it lasts for three to four weeks. What makes cicadas so noisy is essentially having a built-in musical instrument in their bodies. On one side of their abdomen, they have a groovy exoskeleton structure called a timbal. When it's time to make noise, they flex and relax these muscles around the timbal. The frequency of these contractions is crazy fast, up to 480 times per second. That is so quick that human ears perceive it as a continuous sound. By using the timbal, cicadas produce chirping, clicking, or snapping sounds. Their high-pitched buzz or mating song can reach up to 100 decibels. It's kind of like listening to a motorcycle or jackhammer non-stop, or at least until their life cycle ends. Experts have a piece of advice for those with sensitive hearing. You can remove yourself from certain environments to decrease noise exposure, which is cold comfort. In other words, don't go near cicadas. 
One disgusting consequence of the cicada apocalypse is that people will probably face a lot, and I mean a lot, of insect carcasses scattered all over the ground, and a bunch of exoskeletons covering trees and bushes. Plus, when the brief life of an adult cicada is about to end, they tend to fall to the ground, land belly up, and stay completely still, apart from a twitch or two, and that can be a little disturbing. If you're grossed out just by picturing a carpet of crunchy exoskeletons, I have to say that not everyone feels the same way. Some people are very much fascinated by these insects, so much so that there are groups actually planning vacations to observe this rare phenomenon up close. There is also an app called Cicada Safari that maps the insect's range by allowing people to take pictures and report cicada sightings. This is not just a hobby. This app helps scientists to understand how cicadas are adapting during these cycles and what their next moves are. Besides insect enthusiasts and the actual cicadas, of course, one more thing will be really glad about this twin brood event, nature. When those insects appear above ground, they not only provide food for predators like birds, but also serve a vital function by aerating the soil and helping roots get oxygen. So what happens after they all rise? Let's take these two cicadas as an example. The male sings and the female loves his special song. They fall in love in their own way, and by that I mean laying eggs in holes in a tree. So they keep doing that for a few weeks until the female lays around 600 eggs. Just a few. After that, their work is done. So it's like the sad ending of Romeo and Juliet's story. They both lose their lives. And that's why the cicada apocalypse ends with a pile of exoskeletons on the ground. Now let's talk about their babies. Six weeks later, the eggs will hatch and the baby cicadas will drop to the ground. They'll continue the cicada tradition by burrowing themselves into the earth, just like their parents did as kids. These particular nymphs will remain underground for the next 13 or 17 years until they rise again. You may have noticed that I always say 13 years and 17 years without adding words like about or around. That's because their cycle is pretty much like clockwork. And it's quite complicated to explain how cicadas know exactly how many years have passed. Many scientists speculate that periodical cicadas have some kind of internal molecular clock. You know how trees go through their seasonal cycles, right? During this process, the composition of their sap changes, and cicada nymphs underground feed on that sap. So this might be how the environment provides them with clues about the passage of time. By the 17th time, the trees complete their seasonal cycle. Cicadas get the final clue. It's time to emerge. Although this is an interesting thought, no theory has been proven. While we're waiting for a proper explanation, prepare yourself for the cicada apocalypse by getting noise-canceling headphones, earplugs, or white noise machines. If you're still grossed out by their looks and your plan is to travel far away, don't worry. It will be the first and last time you will have to do it since the next double brood event will happen only in 2245. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.